it's clear that darker skinned people, like the darker you are, the more mistreatment that you face. So I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, like you don't wanna hear my mouth because I'm light skinned, but. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution. As you can see, I'm not sitting here by myself. I am sitting here with two sophisticated ladies. Do you want to introduce yourself, ladies? Hi, I'm Joanne. You can follow me on Instagram, jojo underscore smiles. Hi, I'm Brianna. You can follow me on Instagram too, but follow my writing page. It's Brie Michelle Writes. I do poetry, spoken word, all that kind of stuff. In today's video, we're going to be talking about colorism. Before we get started, I just want to say that we are speaking about our personal experiences. We cannot speak for everyone who looks like us, everyone who has our shade. We cannot speak for the whole entire community. So I just want to put that out there. If you want to share your side, then please do comment down below and let's engage in conversation in the comments. So, to start off this video, I'm going to read out two definitions of what colorism is. First definition is, colorism is differential treatment based on skin color, especially favoritism towards those with a lighter skin tone and mistreatment or exclusion of those with darker skin tone, typically among those of the same racial group or ethnicity. That's the first one. The second one is, prejudice or discrimination against individuals with dark skin tone, typically among people of the same ethnic or racial group. So something I'm getting from this definition is, it clearly says that colorism favors light skinned people and tends to work against dark skinned people. Do you guys agree with that? Like yeah. what do you think colorism is? Do you agree with the definition or do you have a different experience or idea of it? Like, I agree with the definition. Um, I feel like, especially lately, with everything that's been happening, there have been a lot of, like, like light-skinned people saying, like, yeah, colorism affects us too. And I feel like it does in its own, like, different way. But I feel like it's still different from being told, like, oh, you're dark, you're gutter, you're this. Because I feel like light-skinned people, at the end of the day, even though people think, oh, like, you're soft, you're this, like, there's still a level of privilege that exists in that. There's still a level of privilege that exists and people think that you're beautiful because of what you look like. So, like, they still have more of, like, more right in that sense, but I still feel like it, it does affect us both, but I feel like, like they mentioned, it does affect um, dark skin people more. Yeah, I agree. I think, like for me, being light skin, like I can only speak to my own like experiences. Um, I think, I, I feel like, especially like for people who don't know my background, like I'm Hispanic and within the Hispanic community, like I feel like they look at, cut like they look at color differently than you would in America, like I feel like within the black, like American community, I'm always like, oh, you're the light skinned girl. But in like Hispanic communities, they'll call me Negrita and like, you know, I got really curly hair, like my features don't really match up to what they would expect. So I think for me, it depends on who I'm around of how much of that like privilege is what I'm feeling, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So with regards to your experience, I want to go into the whole idea that it affects both people. I agree in that uh, colorism does affect both light-skinned people and dark-skinned people. And I could be wrong, but based on the research that I've done, the colorism that affects, affects light-skinned people comes as a result of, for instance, dark-skinned people bullying light-skinned people and um, calling them names. I've heard people say that the dark-skinned people tend to be meaner towards them, calling them names. Um, however, when it comes to colorism for dark-skinned people, it's not about, for instance, light-skinned people calling you names. It's about everybody calling you names. And not only is it about calling you names, but literally, statistically speaking, when you have darker skin, it affects you in work, um, in finding a spouse. It literally affects you in jail time as well. People with darker skin have, I think, if I, if I remember the st statistic correctly, a 66% higher chance of getting a harsher sentence than someone who's light skin. And so, yes, colorism does affect light skin people, but I just don't think, well, not I don't think, but statistically speaking, looking at the facts, <laughs> it does not affect you in terms of work, education, not like it, it w at most it hurts your feelings, but it does not affect how your life can actually go. Does that make sense? What, like, what do you think about that? Um, I feel like, again, like I still feel like it depends, mm -hmm. you know, like who you're around. I think like a lot of times, like 
from my own experiences, like, I just feel like, you know, at the end of the day, most of this, like, separation that, like, light-skinned people try to do is coming from ourselves. Like, like, like oh, I'm not black, I'm light-skinned, whatever. I'm like, at the end of the day, white people are still looking at you like you're black. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, I've worked at, in predominantly white places. I've gone to predominantly white schools, and I'm like, you know, they might not treat me the same way they would treat a dark-skinned person, but you know, if they're not around black people in general, like anyone who's like a bit darker than they are, they're already looking at you some type of way. Mm -hmm. So I feel like for me, like in terms of like work and stuff, like I have felt like the discrimination sometimes, um, but I also feel like most of it doesn't come from my skin tone. I feel like it, a lot of it comes from hair. It comes from like, you know, how I choose to like, you know, express myself. Like if I was walking in with like a weave or whatever, like a straight hair or whatever, I probably wouldn't get the same type of like slack that I get if I was natural because my skin is lighter, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it definitely comes more, for me personally, it comes more from everything else than my actual skin tone. What about you? Have you had any experience in work or school that relates to colorism? Um, I would say not like specifically, like I remember like when I was um, younger and this is like really bad, but when I was younger, you know, like skin bleaching is a thing. So you'd be like, oh, back to school, you know, two weeks before school, get your little, your skin cream or whatever. So you could look all nice and right for school and stuff. And like my cousin used to do that. And I was like, shit, like I want to look nice and right and light. So I would get it too. Nice, but, right and light. Right. Like, you know, it rhymes. It must, it must make sense. So I'll get my little cream and two weeks before school, I used to do that. And then one day I was like, okay, I'm not going to do that. Cause like, this doesn't, this doesn't feel right. But I know like a lot of kids are still like, still do that. And I feel like it, especially when you're at school and you're with all different kids and like, you know, everyone, you know, you're always trying to look nice, you're always trying to fit in. So if that's the way that, it, that helps you fit in, then it could be really detrimental you, to you. And I, I would say I agree with you too, like, because colorism is, is more within like black people or people of color in general. Like I didn't really experience colorism per se because I went to a predominantly white school. So everything against me wasn't just because I was dark, it's because I was black. <laughs> they didn't like black people in general. So, but I will say like, I have like little cousins who go to like Allen and there's like a lot of a lot of Hispanic people, a lot of black people there, and I feel like they definitely do feel colorism. I like I've heard like my little cousins be like, oh well, like, I want to marry a light skin guy so my kid could have good hair. I wouldn't do that on this. I was like, first of all, that's really toxic and yeah. very white supremacy esque. But um, I feel like it probably affects them more because of the students and around the people that they're around because they don't receive racism because they're not as much around much white people. They would probably experience more colorism. I was reading. I really did some research for this video because I wanted to. I wanted to speak not just based on my feelings but also based on statistics. And essentially what I was reading and it aligns with what you were saying is that the more Afrocentric your features are, which includes your hair, how wide your nose is, um, and of course, how dark your skin is, the more discrimination you tend to face. Meaning, yes, you may be light skin, but because of your hair or your nose, you will face that discrimination. However, the lightness of your skin means you, you will face the discrimination you just will not face it as bad or as much as someone who's dark skin. But I think we need to get into this one because, you know, when we look at people of other races, that's racism that they are showing towards us. Colorism is what we are doing to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I wanna get into colorism in terms of beauty and dating because that's something that's important in life for both women and men. So I'm gonna pose a question for you guys. According to worldly standards, are you beautiful? That's a tough question. Right. <laughs> right? I'm thinking of, I feel like, you know, people be like, I feel like in America, you know, one of the most beautiful women is like Angelina Jolie. Right. And I don't I look like, like that girl. Where you're at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or like in, like within the black community. And, we're, and this conversation is relating to colorism as well. Right. So keeping that in mind. So we're excluding like white people. Okay, well, I would say that within the black community, like, just to be frank, the ideal woman is someone who is, you know, of average height, light skin, not 4C hair, maybe like in the threes, you know, you got to be slim thick because, you know, it's 2021. And what would you, what would you add? I don't know. I feel like I agree with what you're, <laughs> with what you're saying because I feel like, you know, that's why I always say, like, I feel like it's annoying when it comes to especially trying to look at yourself through other people's perspective. It's like, you got to check all the boxes. And it's like, okay, yeah, she light skin. Okay, she got a little booty, whatever. But then I wear my fro, and they're like, ah, no, like, that's not it. Like, where's the waves? Where's the, I'm like, mm. Okay. Okay. Someone who told you, like, I, I didn't know light, light skin people could have fros. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Somebody said that? 
Yeah, yeah. I feel like people just are very <laughs> yeah, close minded. Yeah. Ignorance. Yeah. <laughs> to answer my own question, according to worldly standards, do I feel beautiful? Okay. Not always. Um, so I have changed skin tones my whole life. I was at a point where I was very dark, like I, I was super, super dark, um, and I've been very light, and then this seems to be my comfortable medium. By comfortable, I mean like this is where I am most of the time, when I'm not ranging. And in that space where I've been different colors, I get more compliments and more attention and more validation when I'm lighter. When I was darker, I got damn near nothing. And then here, like I'm stuck bang in the middle. Now it's just about whether my face works or not. <laughs> but not all the time. And so you can imagine that like, that having that transition where I had more validation, more attention, more just, you know, you, it makes you feel good about yourself when I was lighter. When I transition to anything outside of that, I, I feel like I am not beautiful. And I read that for black women, for dark-skinned black women to be considered as beautiful, this is not like a fact or anything, but they tend to be hyper-feminine. So as a dark-skinned woman, for you to be beautiful, you have to be hyper-feminine. You can't just be, I don't know, like, I don't know if regular is the right word, but like, you see how they try to like masculinize, I don't know if that's a word, no, Serena that's Williams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when she is, whenever people call her beautiful, it's not when she's on the court playing or after the court or looking, she has to have like all this makeup on and be in a mini skirt. Like she has to be, mm -hmm. present herself as hyper feminine to be considered as beautiful. However, the opposite does not exist, not exist, but it is not as common for lighter skinned people. You can like literally be sweatpants, hair tied, chilling with no makeup on. You are beautiful. And a question that I want to raise is that so I feel like when and when people look like you, and any and by you I mean like and the range between you and like whatever light can be and what the different features, I feel like you're always beautiful. You're automatically beautiful. You're always the chosen one. Um, and media, I think, also sells this. I think we're under media manipulation because I don't want to talk too much, but I think we're under media manipulation because if you look at the music videos. Yes, dark-skinned girls are there, but for the most part, who's there? She doesn't look like me. She doesn't look like you. More often than not, she looks like you or the range of what, you know, um, light-skinned people could look like. So when you look at um, actresses and even covers of even black magazines, who do they put in the middle? Is it Viola Davis they're putting in the middle? Um, so music videos and media, and even if you look at like, the basketball players and the rappers and stuff. These are men that black men want to be like, you know, who they look up to. Who are they dating? Whenever you hear about a rapper and they have a new girlfriend or all these, you know, G Herbo and all these guys, what do their girlfriends look like? Not me, not you, but you and what the spectrum could be like. How do you feel beautiful? when you don't see yourself, and, and by the spectrum of light, I mean you, the spectrum, and also white women too, white women who then culturally appropriate and try to look as black as possible. They really be catfishing you. Sometimes they I can't really do. But like, so how do you feel beautiful in that? But anyway, so I just wanted to put that on the table and I had a question. You see how that perspective, you see how that perspective exists, that you're always the chosen one? But do you feel that way? Is that pressure that you think that dark-skinned women and brown-skinned women are putting onto you? Do you feel like you're always the chosen one? No, I feel like I like I see. No, I like I understand everything that you're saying. I just mean me personally. Mm -hmm. I don't ever feel that way. Mm -hmm. And again, it's because I, I encompass like the rest of the yeah the yeah. things that I take into account. Again, like saying like I grew up in a Hispanic community. I don't look like J Lo. I don't look like you know what they expect you to look like. So growing up around that, I never felt like I was pretty enough because even though I was lighter skinned, I still didn't fit into like all of the, the boxes that they wanted me to fit into. I feel like even now, like, um, you know, for example, like you're saying, like looking at like media, Zendaya, I'm not going to say she's not beautiful. She's gorgeous, but she's tall, skinny, 
wavy hair like you know like I'm like yes this the skin tone like I I see it but I I don't feel it you know what I'm saying like I don't see myself reflected in her because like it for me I I look at more than just just the skin tone and like just like what you were talking about like when you feel like you're in your ranges mm -hmm. um I feel like for me I get the most compliments when I'm not wearing my natural hair you know I could have blonde box braids I could have straight weave I could have whatever and that's when I feel like the most you know people are gonna give me compliments but when I'm wearing my hair like in its natural like short curly fro whatever is when I feel like people tend to like you know like oh, yeah. she ain't what I thought she was <laughs> like like um I get that kind of perspective as well. Um, like growing up, I lived in Florida, and I feel like uh, that's something that's kind of sad too. Is like growing up, like obviously it's sunny, like you know you're gonna get darker, you're gonna get tan, and even like my mother, like she's brown, but like growing up, she'd be like, oh, outside too long, like you're gonna get dark, you're gonna, and I'm like, oh my god, my god, like, and even now, like I feel like it's so ridiculous, like the way that you used to just fear like being darker mm -hmm. because it's like ingrained in your mind, like yeah. if you're gonna be darker, then you're not beautiful anymore, and it's mm -hmm. like. Now I'm just like, I feel pale. I feel like this ain't cute. I'm in my winter shade. <laughs> so you know how you just said that, no, you don't feel that you always, you don't feel like the chosen one. But then does it feel frustrating when people project that onto you and say, why are you complaining? You're the chosen one. Or like when they force it onto you, even though you don't feel it. Do you feel bullied? Do you feel silenced? Because I also want to somewhat, not somewhat, because I also want to bring about the, this, the perspective of, of light-skinned people because they they say and it is not just they say it is two-sided you do feel it on the other side too so do you sometimes feel bullied or I don't know if bullied is the right yeah, word yeah I, like, I wouldn't necessarily say bullied I feel like sometimes like I feel like you know your opinion is automatically negated because it's like okay like what are you talking about like you're, you're like you don't know what you're talking about so it's like, you know, sometimes I definitely do feel like people tend to like shut my, my ideas or my opinions down um, within the black community more often because of the fact that I'm lighter. But I also think that, you know, from an educated standpoint, I understand why people feel that way. So it's like, you know, sometimes you just gotta know when to step down and when it's not your, you know, your turn to speak up on, like, I don't know, speak up on something, I guess, mm -hmm. is what I would say. So it's like, I don't take it as like some personal attack. Like, I understand why people feel the way that they do because again, like, it's, it's clear that darker skinned people, like the darker you are, the more mistreatment that you face. So I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, like, you don't wanna hear my mouth because I'm light skinned, but it's like, I understand because it's like that's all you hear from that's all you see then like I'm not gonna sit here and like try to take it personally or think like I don't consider it like bullying it's just it is what it is like, do yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like. <laughs> I do think it's important that first of all as black people as brown people that we do stand together um, and ultimately fight against the racism that exists because what what is evident in this is that the closer you are to white the more beautiful, the more intelligent you are considered to be. Hence, you may be light skinned, but when you have um, hair, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that is more leaning towards the Afrocentric side, we don't like you so much. And that's because you're leaning towards blackness. And so ultimately, colorism is the daughter of racism. You know, and I feel like it's something that was injected into our ancestors and our parents and something that's passing on to us. So now my question is, how do we reject it? How do we, how? What think, do you think we can do? I think it just goes back to education, like not only in like in like educational settings, but just like ta like having conversations like this, whether it be recorded or whether it be like just with people you know, and also like passing it on to like your family members like I would always tell my little cousins like why are you so afraid to be dark skinned like you are beautiful just the way you are like you don't not, you don't need to be like these little girls in your school like you're beautiful the way you are and I feel like bringing that to your children when because I remember like even like my mom like when I stopped perming my hair and I wanted to go natural she was like do you want to get a texturizer like are you sure and I was like I'm sure this is what I'm going to do she's like but are you sure the next week she would come back, are you sure and I'm like just I don't want to be that type of parent to my kids like I know she wasn't doing it to, you know what I mean everyone yeah. had everyone has their internalized internalized hate, internalized racism. So I know she wasn't doing it in a hateful way, but um, I think that one way that we could be better towards the future is just being better for our kids and being better for our, the people that we know now, our family members and friends and stuff. Yeah, I agree. I definitely feel like 
like you said, like a big part of it is education and it's like not, you know, understanding, like trying at least to understand everyone's perspective. You're never gonna actually be in somebody else's shoes or like, you know, I can sit here and explain it, but no one's ever gonna actually understand what I'm like actually experiencing unless they're experiencing and vice versa. Like I'll never be able to understand what you're experiencing because I'm not walking in your shoes. And I feel like, you know, as long as we can all like sit down and try to like talk to each other about it instead of like everyone internalizing things is like what kind of makes it easier to like go on and educate. And I also feel like a lot of it has to come from like self-love and self-validation because at the end of the day, I feel like media always is changing what it is that's hot what's what's pretty what's this what's that you got to be skinny you got to be slim thick you got to be this you got to be that like so it's like at the end of the day it's it's knowing your own value it's knowing your own worth it's not allowing whatever outside perspectives there are to make you feel like you're any less beautiful it is frustrating when you don't see yourself represented but i feel like nowadays like there are a lot more like various brown women, black women that are coming out, you know, in, in the media. And I feel like it is more, like I'm a little bit more hopeful, but <laughs> you know, it's like a slow progress. Um, like I feel like seeing yourself in other people is important, but also it's about like your own self validation as well. I definitely agree. And I, I, what you like, what you said about like media, I feel like it's really important too. Like, I feel like now again, with everything that's been going on, being like an African studies man, like I went to school, I'm like, if a show doesn't have a black person in it, if a show doesn't have a black woman in it, why am I watching it? Like, I feel like I really have to tailor myself because the more, and I feel like again, the media so has so much pressure. Like, the more stuff with just a bunch of white people, or, or like you have the all white cast, and the only person of color you have is a light skinned female with three A hair. Like, it's just like you tried, but you really didn't. And I just feel like. For my personal like self-love, I just can't watch those things. I'm like, why am I, none of you can relate to me at all, so why am I taking my time to watch that? Red flags, when I'm talking to a guy, if anything starts coming out of his mouth, like light skin, whatever, I'm like, mm, like, if that's the only reason you're talking to me, then like, I, I don't want anything to do with you. I can never imagine myself dating a rapper or, um, you know, a basketball player or an athlete because when I look at the women on their shoulders, they don't look like me. So, so in, indirectly, it's just conditioned me to believe that it's not possible for someone of my skin tone, your skin tone, to end up with people like that. My brother has like these two friends who are like coons and you know, just to say it for the coons and they were literally like, yeah, like I wouldn't date a girl that's darker than me. And they're like, they're like lighter than I am. And I'm like, first of all, like you're like two feet tall and ugly. So preference, like you don't understand like what's wrong with having like that preference. You've been brainwashed by the media. White people have a plague into your head that whatever is white or whatever is closest to white is right. And you believe them. And I just feel like if you're gonna believe white people over your own people again, like we don't need you. Jesu! And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, and we will continue this conversation with a part two that's it for today guys i hope you like this video don't forget to comment like share and subscribe and i will be back with more videos please continue the conversation in the comments peace and love guys